Sometime back, I received in the name of our country the bodies of four Marines who had died while on active duty. I said then that there is a special sadness that accompanies the death of a serviceman, for we're never quite good enough to them. Not really, we can't be, because what they gave us is beyond our powers to repay. And so when a serviceman dies, it's a tear in the fabric, a break in the hold. All we can do is remember. It is, in a way, an odd thing to honor those who died in defense of our country, in defense of us, in wars far away. The imagination plays a trick. We see these soldiers in our mind as old and wise. We see them as something like the founding fathers, grave and gray-haired. But most of them were boys when they died, and they gave up two lives, the one they were living and the one they would have lived. When they died, they gave up their chance to be husbands and fathers and grandfathers. They gave up their chance to be revered old men. They gave up everything for our country, for us. We owe them a debt we can never repay. All we can do is remember them and what they did and why they had to be brave for us. God bless you on this beautiful day heading into Memorial Day weekend. And that clip of President Ronald Reagan was powerful. It has been said that we tend to remember the things we should forget. And sadly, we forget the things we should remember. This week, as we honor the fallen and remember those who died, we need to pause and reflect this Memorial Day that it isn't just parties and picnics, beaches or barbecue, but humbling remember the sacrifice and struggle. The supreme sacrifice of those died fighting for freedom and the struggle of multiplied millions of spouses, family and friends who had to continue on with their lives. Some soldiers and sailors died at home and others in some distant land on foreign soil. But either way, the price was high. I'm reminded freedom isn't free, and all gave some, and some gave all. For millions, Memorial Day may not mean much because too often we take grace and greatness for granted. It is hard to appreciate something or someone you never knew. But Memorial Day isn't just sailors and soldiers, but sons and daughters, family and friends, and some of our high school buddies who never came home alive. One such family friend is Aaron Torian. I first met him while I was in high school. He was my nephew's godfather, my brother-in-law's best friend, my sister's cherished friend, and her girlfriend's husband. I was invited to be an Olympic chaplain also in 2014 at the Winter Games in Sochi, Russia, we had just done London in 2012, Rio would be 2016, but I felt like the Lord said, sit this one out. I was watching the Miracle on Ice 2 versus the Soviets and the U.S. in hockey, and I was watching it on our flat screen television, and my sister called, and she never calls that early, and instead of me saying, hello, Jamie, I just said, Jamie, what's wrong? The interesting thing is she was screaming frantically and she kept saying repeatedly, pray for Aaron. I was thinking she meant some female friend, but she was talking our beloved family friend, Aaron Torian, the one that met in school, the one who was overseas safeguarding our shores. He was the best of the best. He did not one, not two, not three. He did six tours in Afghanistan and Iraq. He was named Marine of the Year not of his division, as if that wouldn't be noble or admirable enough, Marine of the entire United States Marine Corps, the very one who protected Oliver North while he was on the Fox News payroll when he would visit overseas. Aaron stepped on an IED, blew off both of his legs, and God called him home. Some funerals can take weeks or months to be buried at Arlington, 
But Aaron was at Arlington in the ground in less than a week. Full honors, 21 gun salute, and grieving family and friends. But we were all so proud, not just because the way he lived, but the way he died, promoting freedom in a world today that actually promotes being weak or woke. He stood tall and strong. Oliver North was the guest speaker at the funeral, and he called Aaron what we already knew, hero. There's a picture on the screen now. The U.S. Senate Majority Leader was honoring Aaron on the floor of the United States Senate. This picture you see now on the screen is of NASCAR and with Aaron's picture painting on it. Matter of fact, his son painted the image. You'll see the NASCAR driver and you'll see Aaron's wife. It will be at this week's Coke 600 and Aaron is already a winner and I'm believing that the car is gonna win this weekend. Go Aaron. I also wanna to talk to you about Christian. He was the son of another fallen U.S. Marine. The young boy met President Trump a couple years ago at Arlington, and he proudly showed the then president his daddy's grave. I had the honor to meet that same little boy right after, and I'm telling you, these folks not only need our prayers, they are winners. Billy Ray Cyrus sang a song called Some Gave All. I knew a man called him Sandy Kane. Few folks even knew his name, but a hero, yes, was he. He left the boy, came back a man. Still many don't understand the reasons we are free. I can't forget the look in his eyes or the tears he cried as he said these words to me. All gave some and some gave all. Some stood true for the red, white, and blue and took the fall. And if you ever think of me, think of all your liberties and recall, some gave all. Now Sandy Kane is no longer here, but his words are oh so clear as they echo across our land. All of friends who gave their all, who stood the ground and took the fall to help their fellow man. Love your country and live with pride and don't forget those who died. America, can't you see? All gave some and some gave all. Some stood true for the red, white, and blue and some had to fall. And if you ever think of me, think of all your liberties and recall, some gave all. For several years, I served on the advisory board of America's Heroes of Freedom with my dear friend Susan Brewer of Texas. Susan was a former Dallas Cowboys cheerleader. We did many events together from meeting with lawmakers on Capitol Hill. We were honored at home plate at Camden Yards of an Oriole baseball game. And we walked the hallways together of Walter Reed Hospital trying to encourage the brave, battered, and bloodied. At one event, Susan was on the flight line of a military base and they were unloading the American flag draped casket of one of our fallen, who was America's finest. While standing on the flight line, she was standing next to a general with a chiseled jaw, medals galore glistening in the summer sun. And at that moving moment, an F-16 <laughs> flew from behind and startled all those who weren't expecting it. Susan looked at the general with tears in her eyes, only to see tears streaming down his eyes. And the general said, quote, what you just heard above was the sound of freedom. But as he pointed to the deceased casket with the American flag on it, as soldiers saluted the casket coming off the plane, he said, but what you see now is the price of freedom. Some would have you think that it is wrong to love God and love America. My friends, I want to encourage you, it's absolutely right to love God and love country. Christ himself said, render to Caesars the thing that belonged to Caesars. My friend, Christian nationalism isn't the problem, but international terrorism and the weight of sin is. It has been said, if you are alive, thank God. If you have food to eat, thank your parents. If you can read, thank a teacher. But if you are free, and you are, thank a veteran. 
I'm thankful for the history of my family. My dad proudly served in Vietnam with the U.S. Army. My granddaddy served in the U.S. Navy. My cousin Jonathan today serves in the United States Marines. My niece played soccer with the U.S. Coast Guard, and many of our friends are also with the Air Force. Today, I dedicate this show to Aaron Torian and all those who died fighting for freedom and all those who served both past and present. Two words, thank you. One of the most profound letters I've ever read was from a commander in chief from the past. It touched me then and it blesses me still today. It was a letter penned by the president to Mrs. Bigsby. He wrote, quote, I have been shown in the files of the War Department a statement of the Adjunct General of Massachusetts that you are the mother of five sons who died gloriously on the field of battle. I feel how weak and fruitless must be any words of mine which should attempt to beguile you from the grief of a loss so overwhelming. But I cannot refrain from the tendering to you the consolation that may be found in the thanks of a republic they died to save. I pray that our Heavenly Father may assuage the anguish of your bereavement and leave you only the cherished memory of the love and lost, and the solemn pride must be yours alone to have laid so costly a sacrifice on the altar of freedom. Yours very sincerely and respectfully, Abraham Lincoln. The irony is Lincoln could be so poignant and poetic because he prophetically knew that he too would lay his life down on the altar of freedom. He died on Good Friday freeing the slaves. And the Lord died 2,000 years ago on Good Friday freeing us enslaved to sin. The picture you now see on the screen is one of my favorite of President John F. Kennedy. He was talking to a rear admiral that day as he was getting ready to give a speech at Arlington in 1963 and he said, quote, my God, this place is beautiful. I think I could stay here forever. Two months later, the president was gunned down in Dallas, <clears throat> shot in the back of the head, assassinated, and he has been on that hill in Arlington ever since. And day or night, his eternal flame burns bright. I had the honor to meet Kennedy's brother years ago when I worked on the floor of the United States Senate. I served both Republicans and Democrats. And Ronald Reagan said, quote, some people live an entire lifetime and wonder if they've ever made a difference. A veteran doesn't have that problem. My dad protected President Reagan and First Lady Nancy Reagan on multiple occasions. Many of our friends are either on his Secret Service detail or, and I've met two of Reagan's speechwriters. My ancestor was with Lincoln. And in our dining room, Ruth and I have a picture of Lincoln, John Kennedy, and Reagan. One, we were told what you do to one side, you should do to the other. Two, all of them took a bullet for standing for truth. And number three, they remind us, and they remind you today, it is better to die prematurely for speaking truth than live long living a lie. On every communion table from churches across America and around the globe, you'll find two words, remember me. Jesus, on the night he was betrayed, prior to his death at the Last Supper, reminded the world and his disciples that when we take communion and break the bread and drink the cup, may we be reminded of his ultimate sacrifice. Even Christ, the son of the living God, knew that we as humans all too often have a short-term memory. He was reminding us then, and I'm reminding you today, that we do well to not only remember him, but them. My opening statement was we tend to remember the things we should forget and forget the things we should remember. Today, may we never forget the sacrifice of our military, nor the supreme sacrifice of our Savior. Yes, I'm thankful for the red, white, and blue, but I'm thankful for the rich red blood of Jesus who died for me and you. As we go into Memorial Day, if you see a veteran this week, thank them. And don't forget to download our free Frank Shelton Global app today. You can subscribe to our YouTube channel. 
And if you missed last week's powerful episode, as we talked about Hulk Hogan's recent baptism, my friend Zorro new best-selling book, or this throwback Thursday talking about Coach Prime Deion Sanders when we gave him an award, now's the time to honor people, not just when they die, but if you see someone doing it right, honor them to today. Remember this, we're never more like Jesus when we're giving and forgiving. When we were at Aaron's funeral, I was at Arlington, and when those six Marines brought in his casket, I knew they weren't bringing in America's trash, but America's treasure. This was my book, Carrying Greatness from the Womb to the Tomb. We all carry greatness. And if you're one of the first two to email me today, frank at frankshelton.com, I'll give you the book absolutely free. In closing, the Bible verse today is, no greater love than this, that a man lay down his life for his friends. God bless you, and may we never forget. I think it most appropriate that we recall on this occasion and on every other moment when we are faced with great responsibilities, the contribution and the sacrifice which so many men and their families have made in order to permit this country to now occupy its present position of responsibility and freedom, and in order to permit us to gather here together. Let us pray in the name of those who have fallen in this country's wars that there will be no veterans of any further war, not because all shall have perished, but because all shall have learned to live together in peace. The price for this freedom at times has been high, but we have never been unwilling to pay that price. Those who say that we're in a time when there are no heroes, they just don't know where to look. The sloping hills of Arlington National Cemetery with its row upon row of simple white markers, bearing crosses or stars of David, they add up to only a tiny fraction of the price that has been paid for our freedom. Each one of those markers is a monument to the kind of hero I spoke of earlier. Their lives ended in places called Bello Wood, the Argonne, Omaha Beach, Salerno, and halfway around the world on Guadalcanal, Tarawa, Porkchop Hill, the Chosin Reservoir, and in a hundred rice paddies and jungles of a place called Vietnam. Under one such marker lies a young man, Martin Treptow, who left his job in a small town barber shop in 1917 to go to France with the famed Rainbow Division. There on the Western Front, he was killed trying to carry a message between battalions under heavy artillery fire. We're told that on his body was found a diary. On the flyleaf, under the heading, My Pledge, he had written these words. America must win this war. Therefore, I will work, I will save, I will sacrifice, I will endure. I will fight cheerfully and do my utmost as if the issue of the whole struggle depended on me alone. 
we must realize that no arsenal or no weapon in the arsenals of the world is so formidable as the will and moral courage of free men and women. It is a weapon our adversaries in today's world do not have. It is a weapon that we as Americans do have. Let that be understood by those who practice terrorism and prey upon their neighbors. As for the enemies of freedom, those who are potential adversaries, they will be reminded that peace is the highest aspiration of the American people. We will negotiate for it, sacrifice for it, we will not surrender for it now or ever. We are Americans. But the flag still stands for freedom, and they can't take that away. And I'm proud to be an American, where at least I know I'm free. And I won't forget the men who died, who gave that and I gladly stand up next to you and defend her still today Cause there ain't no doubt I love this land God bless the USA Hi Frank um, thank you so much for your kind words. It truly means so much to me. Um, and I just wanted to give a shout out to your group as you guys go off to motivate and minister. I think that's so incredible. I can speak personally just how much my faith carries me through, um, not just life, but the Olympics and training for it. And it can be a lot of pressure. Um, so I really appreciate you guys going out and ministering and sharing the word and being a presence um there for a lot of athletes at, the, at your fourth olympics it's amazing so here's a shout out to your group thank you guys so much for all that you do frank good morning first of all thank you for being a chaplain for the olympics that's one of the greatest things that you could be i mean coming from me i was uh, in the olympic trials 2004 but hey we didn't make it to the olympic team but you know being that I'm, i became victor ortiz wc champion of the world very blessed, you know, so at the end of the day, God bless you, Frank. Keep it up. Keep it going, man. news get the frank shelton global app today it's free frank is a world-class communicator and speaks to audiences across america and around the globe three times he spoke to crowds over 120,000 at nelson mandela stadium this july will be his fourth olympics as a chaplain and heading soon to paris Frank is a best-selling author and you can bring him to your next outreach. Perfect for churches, schools and corporate events. Visit FrankShelton.com It's official! Download the Frank Shelton Global app today. It's free! Stay up to date with current events, Frank's powerful sermons, the By Faith TV and radio show and his calendar. The app even comes with a Bible for easy use and Ruth's very own corner and a section for you to share prayer requests and praise reports. Folks are enjoying Frank's wit and wisdom coast to coast and around the world. Join this exciting Christian community to help you grow in your journey with Jesus. Don't miss out and it's filled with humor and heaven on earth. Don't delay, download the app today. This is history. This is where it all starts. This is a part of our democracy. We are similar to Secret Service, but we're the legislative version. 